Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite fantasy romance authors. I've limited it to 10, okay, 10, and I must have read more than just one book for the author to be considered on this list. The first author on this list is none other than the Queen Grace Draven. These are just two of her books. These are her special edition fake rates of the Wraith King series, the main two books. I love Grace Draven. I've almost read her whole entire backlist. And if you love beautiful writing, like you need to read these. Some of her books are very much more character driven than you would normally see probably in like a Sarah J Mass book. But sometimes I need that in my life. Sometimes I need more character driven fantasy books where the political intrigue is not the main part besides the romance. If you didn't know about Radiance, this is an arranged marriage romance between two people. You have uh, Brishan, the Prince of the Kai, and Ildiko, a, um, what is it called? Like she's the niece to the king of the humans and they get married for an alliance between their peoples, but humans and Kai like are not together like at all. Like they don't live together, they don't coordinate with one another, like they don't even talk to each other. So this marriage is quite a shock for both peoples. And when they first get married, they think the other person is absolutely horrendously ugly. But then they slowly start to fall for each other. This is a friend to lovers romance, definitely character driven. The second book in the series, this one is a conclusion. Like you can read this one if you would like to by itself, but you have to read Eidolon. You, ha you have to read Eidolon, okay? This is the continuation to their romance and it is equally as beautiful. This one has more plot elements. If you thought this one was boring, which I don't know how you could, <laughs> um, but it's very character driven. So if you found this one to be too character driven for your liking, pick up Eidolon because that's when the war comes into play. So she has written so many amazing books and a few of my other favorites are Entreat Me, that's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I also love her Fallen Empire series. I still have to read the last book out, but the first two are amazing. I plan on doing a reread soon because I don't remember anything to read book number three. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that the queen, Miss Ruby back here, Miss Ruby Dixon, who writes all the alien romances, also writes fantasy books. And they're so good. They're so good. You can get her long ones or her little short novella ones. They're so stinking good. So if you're wanting a full length book, this is Bound to the Battle God by Ruby Dixon. This is a portal fantasy. So that means someone from our world in earth, in our everyday life gets sucked through a portal into a fantasy world. And that's what happens to our heroine in this one. And she gets linked to Aaron the Cleaver, the battle God of this world who needs a mortal to link him to the mortal plane. And the heroine just gets stuck with that. And they go on a journey to try and send him back to the heavens because he's a god and to send her back home. The only problem is like they're linked in this book. And um, if she gets too far away from him, she is in horrible immense pain. So she has to constantly be around him and she hates it. <laughs> I love this one so much. Each book in the series is about a human woman from our world having to be the anchor to one of these gods from a fantasy world. In that fantasy world sphere, we also have a bunch of novellas that take place. And these are just two of them that I would love to highlight. You can read the novellas as like complete standalones. I do recommend reading the big books in order though. Um, but this one's one of my favorite Ruby Dixons of all time. This is The Kingspinster Bride. I love this one. This is a romance between a um, hero with only one eye and he goes to find the woman who saved his life when he was a child and is going to marry her and make her his queen. And it is so good. There's marriage rituals in here that are absolutely so hot, so hot. And then this book also has the same marriage rituals, but this is a romance between a human woman and an orc, a half orc man. I love these so much. So if you're wanting good fantasy romances, you gotta read these ones. This one is leaning more towards monster-esque because he is half orc, but these ones, everyone are like, humans but in a fantasy world but there are a few other books in her fantasy sphere all of her fantasy books take place on the same fantasy world but you don't necessarily would need to read them in order besides the main three chunky monkey books next i have amanda boucher well <laughs> amanda boucher so she wrote the kingmaker chronicles these are the original covers i feel like the new covers are definitely more marketable for today's day and age with what people are picking up because I don't feel like people are picking up really these people covers anymore. Even though I love these, I get why they changed the cover, but like 
if these covers don't float your boat, they have better covers, I guess, if you think they're better. <laughs> these are romances all about the same couple, about the same world, about the same woman. So these are books you have to read in order because there's it's an overarching story. It's three books about the same thing. This first book is A Promise of Fire, which is about our heroine who is pretending to be a soothsayer in this traveling circus. People around her don't know that she's actually in disguise. She's like a long lost princess who is on the run. She has these very coveted powers, the powers of a kingmaker, which is a magical creature that exists only once every 200 years. And their powers help put kings on thrones essentially. And our hero ends up seeing who she is like at this traveling circus and is like, oh my gosh, I know what you are. And so he chains her to himself and plans to travel to his land to help put his sister on the, like keep his sister on the throne. He's gonna use our heroine to do that. So definitely enemies to lovers because he literally kidnaps her and chains her to himself. But I love this one so much. And it continues with Breath of Fire and Heart on Fire. So I love these. If you love like Roman and Greek mythology, you also need to read these because that's also weaved into this fantasy world. I do know that she has written other fantasy romances, but I have not read them yet. So let me know if you like her other ones as well. Next I have C.L. Wilson. So my favorite book by her is definitely The Winter King. I know some people are put off by this cover. I don't get why it is so fun to me. I love it so much. Um, but this one is about Kasmin. Yeah, I forgot her name, Kasmin. Um, she actually has storm powers. This takes place in a fantasy world where people have more like elemental magic. Um, and this one is about our hero who is Prince Winter. He has ice powers, okay? And he goes to the King of Summerly, who just happens to be Kamsin's father and tells him, hey, I won't take over your kingdom if you give me one of your very popular, beautiful daughters to marry. The king decides to be like, okay, yeah, you can marry one of my daughters. <laughs> and he decides to secretly marry him off to the daughter he hates, which is Camson that no one knows about. No one knows about this, I think third daughter, no one knows about her. And so she's veiled the whole time they're getting married and during their consummation. And it isn't until they're traveling away from the kingdom that he realizes that he does not know who this woman is like what is going on these two absolutely hate each other because he's like uh you tricked me to marrying you and she's like i had no choice my father literally would have killed me if i didn't so yeah <laughs> it's so sticky good they're fighting a war as well i love it so much and then we have a whole entire series to recommend as well this is her terran soul series this is another series that the covers got changed because people i guess didn't love the covers so it has a more marketable cover which hopefully we'll draw more people into this series because it is an epic romance series. I have yet to read the last one, the, the last one, just because I am nervous to. The villain, the overarching villain in this series is absolutely terrifying. But if you want to read an epic romance series that spans five books about the same couple, kind of like Sarah J Mass, you have the same couple, you have other couples as well, like definitely pick these up. The first book is Lord of the Fading Lands. They got new covers though, if you're interested, and I think they're on Kindle Unlimited, but it's so good, it's Fate of Mates. Our hero is like the most powerful fae creature to ever exist. And he is able to sense his fate of mate in um, Eliseta. Yeah, in Eliseta, who is a meek, small human woman. And fate of mates are supposed to be equal in every way. And she's like, how is the most powerful fae to ever exist? Like my fated mate, I do not get this whatsoever. Like I don't understand. So it's a romance about them and Eliseta discovering who she is and I love these so much and I do need to finally read book number five. <laughs> Next I have Miss Emma Ham. These are the four books that I own by her but she has written so many fantasy romances. I've read more than these as well um, but I only own these four but she writes amazing fantasy romances. I feel like she's so underhyped. More people need to get her books. I feel like she got a little bit more popular with the release of this book which is her mermaid monster romance that does take place on a fantasy world. Humans have inhabited this other planet where, or this other world? I don't really know, where you're not able to live above water because there's constant tsunamis, hurricanes, like it is not safe to live above the water. So they created these underwater city domes and they live underwater in these domes. However, they kind of ruined the underwater life in certain areas because of this. So the merm creatures who are native to the planet hate them and are trying to kill 
as many humans as possible. So the hero of the story starts out with him trying to kill our heroine, who's a mechanic in this, uh, one of the city domes, and he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to like an underwater cave. And it's so good. I love this one so much. It was like my favorite book of the year last year. And then I also have these three other books, which is a part of her, I think it's called the Underworld, Otherworld series. Oh, it's called the Otherworld, the Otherworld series. Okay, okay, okay. So these are the two first two books and it is a duology. Um, so this first one is Heart of the Fae, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And this is a continuation to their romance. So the hero is like a fae creature who has like geodes growing out of his skin and the heroine is a midwife who wants to save her father's life. So she has to go travel to this cast out fae prince and ask for his help. And this is the continuation to their story. And this is another book later on in the series. Um, the whole series in the Otherworld series are all retellings. Um, so this one's a Little Mermaid retelling. Um, but you also have like a Swan Princess retelling and other ones as well. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I really want to get to the Swan Princess one. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Um, but Emma Hamm is definitely another author you need to pick up. Next I have Rebecca F. Kenny. I actually don't own any of her books, but the first book that I read from her was Captive of the Warlord, which is about a barbarian hero who kidnaps the daughter to a very prevalent man who ended up stealing his land. And she actually has some chronic illnesses and food allergies, which I never see in a fantasy book. Um, she is allergic to dairy and other types of food. And you never see that in a fantasy book, so I loved that. Anyway, so he ends up kidnapping her and is like, I'm not gonna give you back to your father unless he agrees to give me back the land of my people. And they obviously end up falling in love. <laughs> and so there's other books in that series. They're like companion books. So you can read all of them as standalones. I think that one's like book number three. And I plan to read book number two or four soon. I have the healer one on my TBR. And then I've also read Sky of Flame and Shadow, which is her dragon shifter romance, which is fun. This is like monster too. Um, Cause there's stuff that the heroine does when like the guy is a dragon which is fun. <laughs> um, but watch out, this one does end on a cliffhanger, which I didn't know going in. So I do need to continue on with this series. The hero kidnaps the heroine. She's a princess in this fantasy world. And he ends up kidnapping her because um, her mother ended up killing all of the female dragons and they're about to go into mating season. And so they need women. Next I have Mila Vane. I love Mila Vane. These are the only two books that she's come out with, but I love them so much. We're patiently waiting for the last book in the series to come out. This one is one of my favorite fantasy romances of all time. If you have not read it yet, oh, you need to. You need to. This one is about our heroine Yuven and um, our hero named Matic. Matic is a barbarian warlord and his parents just got killed. And there's like a rumor going around that Yuven, who is the princess to like a neighboring kingdom, is responsible for their death. So he's co gone out to go hunt her down. She ends up finding him first and tells him like, hey, my father is responsible for their deaths. I know the perfect way to get back at him. Let's get married and take over his kingdom. And Manic is like, okay, let's do it. However, I still don't trust you. So this whole book, he hates her still because he still thinks she has some reason like to do with his parents' deaths, even though she does not. Um, but it is a fantastic Enemies to Lovers. It's one of my favorite Enemies to Lovers ever. Like Yvonne is everything. She's one of my favorite heroines of all time. And then this one takes place in the same world. There's like an overarching evil factor going on, like a villain that they're trying to fight. And yeah, this one's a friends to lovers. There's like a snow leopard in here too. So good. This one's my favorite, but this one's good too. <laughs> Next I have Katie Wilde. Now she writes more like novella length standalone um, fantasy romances. So if that's your vibe, I definitely recommend her books. These are the two that I own. This is Evil Twin, which does take place in a fantasy world, um, but I don't think there's much magic. Our hero is the younger brother to this king by seconds. They're twins, they're identical twins. He thinks his brother is not deserving of the throne at all, so he devises this plot to seduce his brother's to-be-soon wife and make her his and ruin her so like they can get married instead. But there's like some plot twists and other things going on in here. So I really like this one. So if you want a short little novella, there's this one. And then my favorite one by her is the Midwinter Mail Order Bride. This one is about a princess named Anya who really wants her own kingdom. So she decides to travel to this barbarian's kingdom 
who she's heard nothing but horrible things about his kingdom and thinks that he is out to like kill everyone. So she decides that she's gonna kill him and take the kingdom instead. But that couldn't be further from the truth. The hero is just very shy and has like RBF to the extreme, but he loves his people. Anyway, when she gets out of the carriage, I think she either gets drugged or is drunk or something. And basically lets it slip that like, oh yeah, I'm here to kill you and take your sound, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what? So he decides to just put her back in the carriage and take her back to her kingdom to her parents and they actually end up falling in love on the way to her kingdom again. <laughs> if you want fey books that are portal fantasy, I recommend this series by Jamie Schlosser. What's the series called? I don't know. I don't know what the series is called, um, but the first book is The Fey King's Curse. In this fantasy world, um, all the princes have been cursed to be blind by witches until they're able to find their fated mate. The only problem is the way you find your fated mate is by locking eyes with each other and like the bond snaps into place. So there's there's trickiness going on in here, okay? So Kyrian is our hero and he's from this fantasy world. He's a fey prince and he ends up falling through a portal into our world and meets our heroine who is also young. They're like young kids when they first meet and they become best friends. He comes and visits her every day, but time is different in this fantasy world. So one day on earth equals one year in this fantasy world. Hero only gets to see the heroine once a year when the heroine gets to see him every day. It comes to a point where the heroine is, I think like 19, is about to go off to college. The hero is at this point like hundreds of years old. They're just best friends at that point. And she comes up to him and is like, hey, you won't see me for a while because I'm going off to college and I won't be back for like three months. He's like, that'll be like 300 years for me. Like, no. So he ends up taking her and pulling her into his fantasy world. It's like adamant that this woman is supposed to be his. So I love this one so much. And then the prequel, I also own that one, which is Between Dawn and Dusk, which is Kyrian's parents' romance and how they fell in love and find out their fate of mates. This one is Romeo and Juliet-esque to like the extreme. And then there's other books in the series. I've read up to book number four and I think she's coming out with more. And then my last author, one that is very obvious and if you haven't read her books yet, I feel like you need to. Um, and that is Sarah J Mass. I have all of her books right there on that shelf behind me. I do own all the original cover ones in hardback and they're like, my children. Um, so yeah, if you have not read Sarah J. Mass yet, you need to. This is the second book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series, um, which is starts out with a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And then we also have the Throne of Glass series, which is a longer, starts out as YA, but gets more adult. And then we also have the Crescent City series, which is her newest series, which is not a series you can read by itself. You have to read please read the other two series before you get to that one please okay but they're all very good i love her books so much i'll be reading her books till the day i die or the day she stops writing anyways so you have it those are my top 10 favorite fantasy romance authors let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting anything else you can leave me a star emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all